Lindsay here at Tinker Art Studio in Boulder, Colorado. I hope you enjoy our new free kids art workshop series, and if you do, be sure to like and subscribe. At any point during the workshop, hit that pause button when you're ready to work on your own projects. Come on back when you're ready. I won't move on without you. Now, let's get ready to make. Hi, I'm Christy here at Tinker Art Studio and we are bringing you a workshop today making these really cool wire tree sculptures. I am so excited to show you how you can make your very own wire tree sculpture today with a few materials that hopefully you have collected or you'll collect soon. Now, these wire tree sculptures can be made in so many ways and I want you to start by thinking about a place that you really enjoy spending time. When I was a little kid, I really loved a tree down by the pond at the house where I grew up. This was in North Carolina. And what I loved about this tree was I could go sit underneath the tree and look up at the leaves and watch the wind blow and listen to the sounds. And it was a place that I just really enjoyed spending a lot of time. So I want you to start by thinking about if you have a place in your life where you enjoy spending time, in particular out in nature. This might help inspire you to think about some ways that you want to create your very own tree sculpture. You can see on this tree, we have some fabric leaves, some beads. There's even a little swing right here. This might be one of my favorite parts on the tree. And a little clay bird perched right up here on this branch. I'm going to be teaching you how to make your tree, how to even make little clay animals that might live in your tree. But I want you to think about what you want your tree to be like. So to start, we are going to prep our wire by cutting 12 lengths of aluminum wire to 24 inches each, that's two feet. So I'm going to take my ruler, which is a one foot ruler, and lay it down and just approximately measure what two feet will be on my wire. So I lay my ruler down once, mark that spot, hold it, and then lay it down a second time to get about two feet of wire. And then I'm going to cut my wire with my scissors. Now I'm using just a pair of kid scissors, the kind of small size that we have here at Tinker. This will work just fine to cut this wire. It's a really nice soft wire and, and um, pretty easy to cut and fun to work with. Instead of continuing to use my ruler to cut the rest of my wire pieces, I'm going to use this piece as a guide and lay it down to cut the rest of my pieces. I'll line up one edge, hold it, and then cut on the other side. Now, I do want you to be mindful of something when you're using wire and cutting it. You do need to be very careful about anyone who might be next to you because these ends are kind of pokey and we're working with long pieces of wire. So in addition to being careful about anyone being, uh, that might be close to you or around you in your space, be sure that you're also mindful of your own face and body and space around your own body um, as you're working with this wire. When I continue to cut the rest of my 12 pieces, I'm going to use a wire that I've already cut as a loose guide, but I'm not too worried about it being exactly the same size. Just, just close will be just fine. All right, let's cut the rest of these pieces. Okay, now that we have our wire, we are just about to start building our tree sculpture. Now, if you have not already found a rock to use as the base of your sculpture, now would be a great time to take a little break and go outside and go on a little rock hunt. Really, any rock will do. If you have cut your pieces of wire to this size, to the 24 inches, you will want a rock that's about this size and weight that you see me holding. It fits comfortably in my two hands. We want it to be big enough that it will hold and support the weight of this size of a tree. Now, this rock has kind of a rough edge over here. I really sort of like that texture. This rock is much smoother. 
you can find a rock that you think will work just right for your tree sculpture. If you were, if you wanted to make a smaller tree sculpture, maybe only use wires that are a few inches long, you could also maybe go find a little tiny rock. And after we've made one together, you could keep making more wire tree sculptures of different sizes. I think it would be fun to have a whole forest of these wire tree sculptures of all kinds of different sizes. Maybe a little tiny ones, medium ones, big ones, maybe even a giant one that lives on a rock outside in your yard. I think that would be pretty neat. All right, now we have our rock and our pieces of wire cut and we're going to get started on twisting our wire to form the tree. We're going to start by kind of lining up all of the wires. Now you can see that some of my wires um, are slightly different lengths and that's okay. I like to kind of tap on the table and hold them in my hand to get them all lined up on the bottom. Now I'm going to start in with my hands in the middle of my wire and I'm going to start twisting. And I, if I twist like this, I'm getting a really nice thick trunk that's very tightly wound together. So this is one way that you might build the trunk of your tree, which is what we're starting with right now is building the trunk. We want to leave a little bit of um, wire at the bottom for those roots. And that's really important that we don't twist all the way down here. So I'm leaving about a little more than a hand's length on the bottom that's not twisted and put my hand here and then even more on the top that's not twisted and then I'll put my hand here and do that twist. I have a nice trunk by just doing a nice tight twist. Now you'll see on this tree over here that this trunk has more variety to it where the um, the center of the trunk was really twisted and then the outside of the wire the outside of the trunk on these wires is a little looser and kind of uh, more wavy. This gives a really interesting texture and look to this tree. You may choose to do your tree that way instead of this really tightly wound tree. If you'd like to do that, you could either start that way by keeping a couple of your wires separate, or you could kind of loosen this section that you tighten as you twisted and then twist it again at the bottom to keep it tight at the bottom and looser in the middle and then tight again at the top to sort of close off the trunk on the top and on the bottom. You can then take the trunk wires and shape them even more in all kinds of different ways and we'll have a chance a little later on to put some sort of finishing touches on this part of the trunk as well. Now that we've built our trunk, we're going to move on to building the roots of the tree, wrapping it around the rock at the base. This is going to give us a really stable bottom to our sculpture where we can then work on our branches and building out our tree once it's really secure on this big, nice rock. So at this point, I want to take a moment and spread out the bottom of my tree roots at the bottom of my branch of my trunk right here. And I'm going to spread them out so that they're kind of nice and even all the way around. That's going to give me a really secure base to my tree sculpture. So if I have two over here and then a whole lot over here, I want to move these wires over to the other side so that I'm spreading it out it kind of reminds me of like a clock face or just a big circle. This is going to give me a nice structure to wrap around my rock. And you can see that it already stands up kind of on its own. It's kind of bouncy, which is fun. I'm going to set this on top of my rock. Now, maybe your rock is big and flat. Maybe it's taller you can select a spot on your rock. It doesn't have to be right in the middle. I think it would look pretty neat on this rock for the tree to be attached or kind of look like it's growing right off the side up here. I'm gonna start by just kind of finding that space and pushing the wires down and then 
tucking them underneath all the way around the rock. Now again, be mindful of your face and anybody around you as you're working on this part of your sculpture. There is really no right or wrong way to do this. You can kind of play with this to see how it looks and also to just get it to the right space for on your rock and with your tree to make sure it's nice and secure and it's not going to tip over or fall over. Okay, now that my um, wires are wrapped around like roots around this tree and here's what it looks like on the bottom, I can now start building out the branches of my tree. For the branches of my tree, I'm going to start by separating out these wires. And I want you to think about a tree that you see. You might even take a break and go look out the window or take a little break and walk outside. Find the tree and notice what happens where the tree branches come out the trunk of the tree or come off the trunk of the tree at the very top. We have this nice thick trunk and then the branches start. And the branches that are closer to the trunk of the tree, you will likely notice, or you might have already noticed, are much thicker than the branches out at the very tips of the tree. So to create that effect on our wire tree sculpture, I'm going to separate my wires into two sections to start, maybe three actually. So if I have 12 wires, I am going to make them into sections, into three sections, which means, think about how many wires I will have in each section. One, two, three, four wires in each section. Now, if you wanted to divide up your sections of the branches of your trees in a different way, absolutely go for it. You might like to keep them all separate. You might like to do two big ones or maybe five big ones with different numbers of wires in each one. They don't have to be even either. You'll notice when you start looking at trees that every tree is so different and so unique. And some have really thick branches, some have much thinner ones. Your tree can be however you would like to make it. You are the artist, you get to decide. Okay, now that I have my three sections of my branches, I am going to start adding some interest to these branches here. And to do that, I will be using things like beads or other things that you might have at home that you'd like to add onto the branches by looping them or stringing them onto the wire. The beads that I have here are these plastic pony beads. And they work well because there's a wide hole in the middle, so it makes it really easy to string them onto the wire. I like to put a couple of beads in different spaces on my tree, and then I'm gonna spend a little more time twisting these branches. This is the really fun part of this project where you can twist two branches together, leave them all separate, make interesting designs or loops. It is totally up to you. Have fun twisting your branches and continuing to build your tree. I'm gonna give you just a couple of quick tips. You might like to, as you keep bending and twisting, you might like to curl the ends of your wires into little spirals. You might like to twist two of them out of my, so I have four twisted to start at the base of this branch and I'm separating them into two and two now to get them even a little smaller and then I'm going to move on to just one branch. As I'm doing that, I'm adding beads or other embellishments that you might have at home. Here's like a big wooden bead that I might string on there. You might like to add some loops and curls you might like to make some wavy branches with your wire. However you want to now twist and build out your tree is totally up to you.
Now that you've built your branches, I would like to invite you to take a moment, if you have not already, and twist over the ends of each tip of each branch so that that um, kind of pokey part of the wire is twisted underneath and all of your branches kind of have a nice soft round edge to them. After adding all of our beads and curling our branches just right, you still have time to go back and make all kinds of changes and adjustments if you feel like you want to change the way your branches are bent at any point while we're working. I am gonna move on to showing you how to make some little clay animals that might live in your tree. I'm using Crayola air dry clay and I start, this is a pretty big piece. I'm just gonna take a small piece like the size of a marble off of my clay and roll it into a sphere or a ball. Now from here, you can use your imagination and what you already know about working with clay or building animals to create little creatures and animals that might live in your tree. I'm gonna show you how to make just a very simple bird form to start. After rolling into a sphere, I'm going to pinch, 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 pinch the beak or the nose of my bird. So you can see that now I kind of have a spear and then the beak that's poking out that side. I'm gonna do the same thing where the tail might be on my bird. Just kind of making that spear a little longer and pinching it out into more of a tail shape. Now I have a beak and a tail with a bird's body in the middle. If you have feathers or anything at home that you would like to actually stick a real feather in each side of your bird, that might be fun to do. I'm gonna build my whole bird out of clay and just keep it a very simple form. So from here, I'm going to set my little bird in my tree and find a branch that I think looks just right for my bird. I think I wanna have this bird perched right up here on the top. And because my clay is nice and wet, I'm just gonna kind of squish part of the bottom of my bird right onto the branch and make sure that it's um, kind of stuck on there enough with enough of the wire pushing into the bird that it will stay put. I can now make some minor adjustments. Maybe I wanna flatten out those tail feathers a little more, make the beak a little bit pointier. If you have a pencil or a pen, you could always poke a couple holes in for the eyes. That will help your bird look more realistic. Any other ideas you have for building little creatures out of clay to add to your tree would be really fun to do. This, if you're also using Crayola air dry clay and you wanna attach pieces together, you can do that by just getting a little sip of water on your finger and dotting the water onto the clay and then pushing the two pieces together. I'm gonna work on a few more birds to kind of have a whole little flock of birds sitting in my tree. Now, if you have a little, <laughs> baby's wake. <laughs> My three month old wanted to make an appearance in the video. So we are going to do this together. If you have a, any bit of cardboard at home, I wanna show you now how you can add a little swing to your tree. Um, and I wanna encourage you to think about any other ideas you have. You might like to use paper or cardboard to make leaves that you attach to your branches. Any way that you think you'd like to add more to your tree would be wonderful and I would highly encourage you to do it. Yarn is also really fun to just drape all over your branches if that is of interest to you. It adds kind of a nice soft texture 
to complement the hardness of the wire. To create a little swing, I'm going to cut a couple lengths of yarn. I always like cutting more than I need so that the knots are easier to tie. I can always trim off the ends after I tie the knots. And then choose where I wanna hang my swing. I think I'm gonna hang my swing over on this branch right over here. And I'll start by tying a knot on, um, <laughs> from the string onto my branch. Now I already cut a small piece of cardboard that, will, that I'll use as the seat part of my swing. The easiest way to poke a little hole in cardboard is to use, um, I find a really easy way to, to do it is to use a pen. So I'm just going to use a pen and sometimes it can help if you have another piece of cardboard underneath it and really kind of wiggle it around to make that hole bigger. You can even hear it popping a hole through. Next, I'm going to use a little bit of wire to help push through that hole and attach it to my yarn. So I'm going to take a piece of wire and form it into a big U shape. And then with, with those holes that I just poked in that small piece of cardboard, put each side of the wire through the holes so that there's wire on the bottom of my swing seat on the bottom of that cardboard and two pieces of wire coming up on each side or one piece on each side. Then I'm going to make a loop in the wire to make a little circle. So with this circle, one on each side, I can then tie my yarn from my tree right onto that circle. If you have another way that you would like to build a swing in your tree, you, you could certainly do it that way. Another idea would be to just use wire um, instead of yarn. I just happen to like the look of the yarn and the color of it. To tie these knots, I'm tying what's called a square knot, which is the first step to tying your shoe twice. I'm glad that I gave myself kind of lots, lots of extra room to work with with my yarn because that will help me have enough to kind of balance my swing to see, um, to see that it's even on both sides and to easily tie these knots. I can always trim off the excess string or yarn. Now, when I trim off that excess yarn, just be sure that you don't cut too close to the knot so that the knot doesn't fall out. Now I have a swing. Okay, Aris, the very last thing I want you to consider before we conclude this workshop today is any final changes, adjustments, details, embellishments that you would like to add to your tree. If you'd like to, maybe you wanna consider bending the your branches in a slightly different way so that one swoops down more. Take a look, step back from it, turn it around in different directions and see if there's any final adjustments you'd like to make. One of the really fun things about this particular workshop is that you can always make adjustments later too. If after your clay dries, another thing you might like to do is paint your birds or creatures that you have in your tree you might also like to paint your um, swing seat or anything else that you've added. I hope that you enjoyed making your wire trees today. I sure did. And I would love to see your artwork. So please send me an email with pictures of your artwork or if you're on social media, post it on Instagram or Facebook and tag Tinker Art Studio. I would really love to see your work. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you are enjoying these workshops and you would like to support Tinker during our closure, as well as the Future Arts Foundation, you can find a link to donate in the bottom of, or in the video description. We'll see you next time.